Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today is another trying to fix video and in this video we're going to try to fix R2-D2 down here. So this is made by Sphero, I think that's how you pronounce it, and it is a droid which connects via an app to your iOS device or Android device and then you can control it and do various different things. Imagine it like a radio control car, but it will also do different things. Like for example, if I was to press that button there, it will do that. And then if I was to do this one here, it should whiz across the room. But therein lies the problem. So what happens is, it seems to do everything that it should do when it's connected to power, apart from move. But as soon as I pull out that power, it will lock up completely. But let's leave it connected for a while. I'm just gonna show you what the owner of it said. So it's been sent in by a long-term viewer called Emma. So she's been watching these videos for, I think as long as I've been making them. Emma's been commenting and giving me support on the channel for a long time now. So uh, she says here, Hi Vince, I've sent my Sphero R2-D2, which I purchased as spares repair on eBay. It powers up and connects to the apps without issues. While connected and charging, a user is able to control limited leg movements and full head and sound functions. When unplugged from the charging cable, however, any locomotion results in the droid locking up. The device can be still powered down from the app though. I have removed some debris from under the tracks and believe the previous owner ran the, ran the R2 on carpet and maybe with maybe a greasy pet. I, I have removed the body shell. Instructions for disassembling can be found online to check the battery, which appears fine. The boards seem clean. I have read that removing the dome can be tricky, so expect you may snap some tabs if it comes to that. There were no instructions, but many of the functions are easy to figure from the app. It will be interesting to see if it reacts to your BB-8. So I have a little BB-8, like the little round ball one that whizzes around. It's got like a magnet for the head. So the head stays in position while the ball whizzes around. I can show you that later if I remember. Uh, it says here, I've enjoyed watching your channel for many years now and have confidence that you will give this a good shot. I hope your other viewers find this one interesting as there are many, many R2-D2 units out there with issues of one kind or another. Regards, Emma. So now you can see he's still doing loads of different things. I mean, it, it is, it does look amazing. I have to say like the BB-8 that I've got is one of those things that after a couple of days you kind of lose interest on. But this one here is the way it sounds and stuff. It just seems much more, much more likable and much more real. It's, uh, it is really very good. But anyway, check this out now. So you can see in all that time there, it's been working fine. As soon as we disconnect power from it, it will still work. So for example, you can see the motion controls of the head. Are they gonna work? There we go, yeah. Yeah, but yet when we do something, like for example, if I was to do this now, it will do the first bit and now that's it, it's locked up now and it won't do anything else. So at the end of this one here, it should, when this runs out here, because it's sort of going around like a timer, when that runs out, the legs should go back up inside, but it's not doing that. And now the only way to get it to work again is to plug it back in, give it power. So I have actually already had a look inside this one and I've just basically measured, there's loads of different wires, uh, like ribbon cable, not ribbon cable, they're just connectors that go from one part of the boards to the other boards. And I cannot find what's wrong with this at all. So rather than it just be a complete failure and a pointless video, I've bought another one. And the other one I've bought is also not working, but it's got a different fault. So with this one here, it doesn't move. It doesn't drive around the place. The other one drives around the place, but the leg doesn't go back up. So basically it just falls over instantly but it does something different than this one. So what I'm hoping is to get one working out of two of them. Or what would be amazing is if I can work out what's wrong with this one by measuring against the other one because there's different faults and if it would be possible to get two working out of two, that would be amazing, but I think it's highly unlikely. Now this fault that Emma has here must be quite a common one because when I looked on eBay for spares or repair ones, the, another one I seen had exactly the same issues as this one here. Now I had to pay 30 pounds for my one. Working at the moment, these are going for over a hundred pound, which is just crazy because I don't even know if they cost that much when they were new, 
But even if they were that much when they're new, secondhand, they should definitely be less than that. But that's what the market's dictating at the moment. So I had to pay £30 for a faulty one without a box or anything like that. But for me, it's worth it. If I can get a good working video out of it, and if I can get them both working or one working out of two, that will be a success for me and worth every penny of £30. So let me show you the other one to show you what that one's doing. And then we'll get the blue mat out and take them both apart and see if we can get them going. So here we have his friend R3D3 and as you can see from this one it's behaving differently to begin with. These just seem completely loose and this is permanently down. So I'll flash up the eBay listing for that right now. And now this has been on charge for a good couple of hours so let's try to connect this one up. And also this one here, when you're charging it, it's got a red light down here. I have left this charge all the way until I can't remember if it goes off or it turns green, but they take a good three hours to charge up. And uh, there we go, let's just connect this one up. And uh, yeah, it's still doing the same thing. So initially you would think it's not a battery problem, but now I'm thinking it might be a battery issue. That's the reason why I wanted to get a different one with a different fault, so I can swap the batteries out. Right, okay, so he's going now. And now, if I go here, there you go. See, he falls over, so he doesn't, uh, but at least, at least he's trying to move. And if I do these things here, he's not jumping around like the other one did. And also the leg's not retracting. So when I do this one here, he should whiz across the room, which he's doing now. And now at the end, the leg should go up. Let me just get him back over here. Whoa. Now the leg should be back up and it's not, it's not going back up. Right, so I'm gonna disconnect both of them and then let's take them apart and let's see what we can uh, work out on the inside. But I think it's gonna be an interesting one. So here we go, I'm just gonna take apart Emma's one first because this is the one that, uh, that I've already had apart. Now, you can see that the third leg has gone back in on this one, but not on this one here. So to do it, there's uh, a good tear down on uh, online if you just type in sphero r2d2 teardown it's uh, it's the only website really that shows you where uh, it shows you what to do so what we have to do is we have to take the legs off to begin with and that's just using a crosshead screwdriver now what i have noticed already is that when i move these here they do move but they're a little bit stiff while with these ones here they're really smooth so that could also be an issue but i don't believe it's just that all right so now that they're off i'm going to take off these two screws here now this isn't the same one as the hasbro one there's a lot of hasbro ones for sale on ebay but i think they're a cheaper a cheaper version this looks like it's really well made right now that they're apart you need to just prise out these two little covers here and that exposes more screws Okay, and now that gives us access to the body here. Yeah, so I'm just gonna unplug the battery. This is the battery in this section here. So you can see that we've got a board down here, a board here, a little, well, a motor here, and then we've got another motor for the head up here. And the problem is, I don't know what the problem is. So all I've done so far is undo this connector here and measure between pin and pin. So all those wires are fine. Undo the connector between here and up at the head they're all testing fine and you see these connectors here for the motors because i believe these two are the two chips that drive the motors i think each chip can drive two motors and i think we have two motors for the forward movement here we've got another motor in here for the leg and then we've got another motor for the head here so initially when emma told me about this i thought maybe the chips are faulty but unless the one chip does both legs, which it could do, then I don't think it is that because the motor for the leg works and the motor for the head works. But it is possible that one chip does the head and the leg and then the other chip does the two movements here. So it, uh, it could be that. But what I'm going to do is just swap the boards out for here to begin with. Well, to begin with, I'm going to swap the battery out. It could be as simple as a faulty battery. Now, this battery is measuring the correct voltage, but just because it's measuring the correct voltage, it doesn't mean that it's actually going to be able to provide the power. You know, it might be like a car battery where it might have 12 volts until you start to crank it, and then it will go right the way down. So it hasn't got enough power to start the car. But if you have a look here, if I go between 
here and here, I'm just on DC, you see here like four volts. Yeah, so you would think that that would be okay, but maybe if you were to try to draw power from that, maybe it would drop to next to nothing. Who knows? I don't know. Uh, now, to get the head off is a complete nightmare. There's basically little tabs here that you have to uh, yank off. But this one now, because it's already broken, will come off nicely. Online, it looks like there's no other way to do it apart from just uh, breaking those tabs. So you can see here, we've got a tab here, a tab here, and this one broke here. But it still clips on nicely, and it doesn't go anywhere once it's on. So what I did is unclip this one from here. And then, so this board here, it has a lot of the LED that gives that gives it the lights and uh, yeah measured that cable going up there so I measured all the points between there and there so all the cables are definitely okay now what else have I done let's take it apart further so you can see more of it so while we're tearing into this little droid let's give the my mate Vince massive a big shout out so this month it is still nine members which is just fantastic so Saturnine Cinema Robert Hughes Operational 117 KitDigital.com Kip Hakes Max Rokotansky Jaw Media and Will Michaelis massive 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 thanks to you nine and also the countless others that support these videos via Patreon not just Patreon if you're viewing them and leaving comments you're helping the channel so big thanks to you all Right, so that's the uh, the body there. And you see this bit here? This is the speaker. Yeah, and that's plugged into this board here. So now, well, actually, I did take this off before as well because I had to measure the wires from these connectors here. So basically, I just unplugged these connectors here and then went between the pins here and the pins at the bottom of the leg. So let me just take off one of the legs to show you that. Right, so here we have the gears to uh, either reduce it down, I suppose, is to reduce it down. And uh, this is the motor here. And then it goes through there. Yeah, so from this motor that spins, it goes through there onto that gear there, which is connected to the tracks, you can see. Yeah, and we've got a linkage going from here to here to make it do this. So let me just show you that. Okay, so you can see that we have the linkage there. And then the wires go down from here, down to this uh, this motor. And also, I think this is some kind of uh, Hall effect sensor. Because we have like a magnet and then there's sensors underneath it. So it knows the position that it's in. Right, so what I'm going to do is, because I don't believe that this here is the problem, let me just clean it out a little bit and then put this leg back together. Look at that, that's a nice lump of hair there. Yeah, look, all the hair here. Maybe that's what's making this one a little bit hard to turn. This here, just the extra resistance of all this trapped hair. That's probably it. So you can see there how that mechanism works. So when this turns up here, it moves the leg like so. Right, at long last that leg is back together. That took a ridiculous amount of time. So I am now gonna do exactly the same on this one here, strip this one down, and then we're gonna start swapping boards, swapping batteries and stuff like that. And hopefully we can pinpoint what the problem is with this one here, and then other people will know. And uh, so they'll be able to fix their one. And also I might be able to find out what's wrong with this leg in the middle here. Maybe it's purely a mechanical thing rather than electrical.
I've got the obligatory cut on the finger or thumb dealing with anything fiddly. So I'm just going to put a plaster on that because uh, I don't want to bleed all over Emma's uh, R2-D2. So now I'm thinking it could be battery related. So let's eliminate that one to begin with. So I'm going to take this one out. Okay, they just slide out actually, that came out very easy. Brilliant. Let's put this one in Emma's one. Now I've had a look online, I can't find these ones for sale. Which is, a, which is a real shame, but maybe it's a lithium battery. Oh, here we go, this is the information here. Okay, so if I was to type in that as sent batteries, it might come up, it's got a model number there as well. And uh, yeah, 1400 milliamp hours, 3.7 volts, so that's a lithium, 170710. Okay, let's have a quick measure of this battery here. Yeah, four volts, so it's the same, uh, it's the same as that one. We'll see if it does anything different. Right, let's see now if it's going to uh, want to turn round. Right, take out USB cable. But it didn't recognise that I unplugged it. No, it's not battery related. Let's see if it still cuts out. Yeah, it's gone. Right, so it's not battery related. Interesting. Okay, let's uh, get off this app again. I think I'm going to start swapping boards over to see what it could be. I think I'm going to start with this board down here because this is the board that deals with... Well, this is the one that deals with the movement though, isn't it? Which one should I do first? Okay, I'll do this one first because this is the one that deals with the movement. I hope these boards are interchangeable. Oh, and by the way, I went across the capacitors and stuff. I couldn't find uh, a short on anything. The only thing I thought was slightly weird was that there's some big resistors on the bottom here that are both short into ground, but they're on ground. So that's the only thing that, well, sorry, loads of things confuse me on here, obviously. Hence the reason I bought another one to try and fault find it to make it easier for themselves. But these resistors are both on the ground, but it looks like they're designed to be on ground. So if you have a look here, I'll go to uh, that point there and that point, you can see it's ground. But now have a listen on the resistors. And they're fully on ground as well. So if I was to go to ohms, go on that side you can see the reading it's given yep two ohms two ohms and if I go to the actual ground here two ohms so you can see it's fully ground oh look this is slightly different the connectors are different but saying that the uh, the components, just having a quick look, seem to be the same. Let's give it a go. Emma is fully aware that I might well break it completely. Obviously, I'm, I'm going to try not to, but it could happen. I'm not sure if these connectors are slightly different. I don't believe it. Just broken that connector there. I should still get away with it though, but the plastic's come off the top. The connectors are different. I just didn't think that that would happen. It must be a slightly different revision. Oh, come on. Well, if the connectors are different there and the connectors are different here, which they are, I won't be able to swap the boards, will I? Well, I suppose I could swap the, no. No, I won't. I was going to say I can swap the cables, but I can't. Yes, I can swap both boards, but what's the point of swapping both boards? The, the problem must be on the boards. I wanted to find out which board was faulty. I didn't dream that would happen. 
Uh, okay. That's a real shame. Well, saying that, the motor and stuff works on this leg here. So let's swap both boards over. But then I'm going to have to swap every single cable. What a nightmare. No, that really is a nightmare. Uh, the motors, everything's going to have to be swapped. That's not really an option. I mean, if I'm doing that, I might as well just take the leg out of this and put it in here. Because it looks like the problem with this one is to do with the leg. Or saying that, it might not be. It might be something to do with the board that's stopping the leg from going up. It might not be a mechanical issue. Oh, that's really, uh, really spoilt it. That's really spoilt it. Because I think this video now is going to be a failure. Because, uh, unless I can go across the board with my multimeter, it might pinpoint a chip that's faulty. That's annoying. Yeah, you can tell the connectors look completely different. Look at them. You can see the pins on this one. You can't see them on here. Just notice as well that the inside plastic's different as well. Maybe the legs are not interchangeable. But that does look like just a different colour. The mouldings do seem to be the same. Okay, right. I think uh, let's go back to the thing of trying to get one working out of two. And then maybe I can find the boards at the end. Right now, I just want to see if I can get one working before I break them both completely. So I'm going to take this apart more to see if I can find out what's going on with this inside leg. Right, so we've got a little potentiometer there. Right, so I'm going to forcibly remove this head now. So you can see the little tabs here. The problem is the tabs are so big that they don't actually fit through the, uh, the hole very well at all. So the teardowns that you see online, they had to break the tabs as well. I think it's just one of those things. Just bending up my uh, tools. Just gonna have to use a screwdriver. That one came off a lot easier than this one. Oh, there we go. That was a nightmare, that one. Okay. Right, so this is little clips around the edge. Oh, I think that's another little clip just here. There we go. Okay. Now, can we see why this isn't going back in? Oh, it's these ones here, isn't it? Okay, so that's jammed. Let's pop that out. Oh, and that's freewheeling. So it's this one here that does the actual movement. That square one there. So I still can't actually get to... Uh, I still not... Oops, that's still not allowing me mecha uh, access to the mechanism. I'll have to take it apart further. So that's the speaker there. Well, let's undo all this here, hopefully. Uh... Oh, so the leg... Ah, now, remember the arms, the arms wasn't, the legs weren't working on this either, so the third leg wasn't working with these two arm leg ones. So, maybe, maybe that's linked. It all looks like it's from the same thing. I think I'm going to have to take the head off as well. Yeah, there's going to be screws going through into these, aren't they? So, uh, yeah, let's undo this. I 
And so that one cable is the main feed for all the LEDs up the top. There. Looking at the pile of bits down here now, I think it's going to be a bit of a headache to get this one back together. Even if we do find out what's wrong with it. Okay. Do you know what? Let's just get rid of that completely. So that is the... Oh, that's the motor. Oh, motor and potentiometer. So it knows the, the uh, location of the head. Right, okay. So now this should be free to come apart once I undo that little clip here. Here we go. Excellent, it didn't all spring out at me. So now what is happening? Why is this not? This is the... Mm, hold on, where is... What does the turning of all, the, all of this? Where's the motor that does the turning for this? Oh, it's this again, isn't it? Of course, the motor at the side. Yeah, the motor that turns this one here. So, when this goes down, what is it doing? Has this just come out from there? There, does that just need to go into that slot there, I wonder, hold on. I wonder where this bit goes here, it looks a bit sort of in the middle of nowhere. So it definitely allows it to move up and down there. And this is the thing that kicks the arm in and out, the legs, the legs in and out. And that, that's got a bit there, so that has to kick into something. Oh, it snaps, it snaps here. Here we go. This big thing here snaps, hasn't it? That there, and we've got a crack here. So, that's probably under quite a lot of strain. Yeah, do you know what, it was probably down and maybe somebody tried to force the leg back up and that broke that bit here. Oh yeah, of course, sorry, that's how it goes there. One side, that side there, and so that bit slots onto that bit and that bit slots onto there. Yeah, you can see it there now. Right, I mean, it, it's possible that it could be glued, but I've got a feeling. Well, do you know what? If it was glued and maybe the soldering iron put across it, that might make quite a good, uh, good strong, uh, a good strong bond. But right now, it's kind of pointless spending hours on that if we can't fix whatever's wrong with the, uh, the board. So I think to begin with, I think I am going to swap the mechanism from Emma's one into this one. I'm sure if Emma gets back a working one, it doesn't matter which one uh, which one it is. Uh, I can't see why that would matter. Well, so I suppose if yours has a broken leg too, there's a good chance then that that bit snaps on yours. And I'm just wondering what's the easiest way to do this. I suppose realistically the easiest way is just to change all the boards and stuff out. And the legs. Right, let's try let's just try to get one working one. Right, what I'm going to do just off camera, because it's going to take quite a while, I am just going to compare different things on the boards to see if we can find out, to see if I can find out what's wrong. Maybe a chip has gone faulty. Maybe I'll find that something is shorted on one of the chips that's not on the other ones, and then at least we know what has caused the problem on Emma's one. Okay, so I've gone across these. The ones with the black connector are the good boards. We think, I think it's just this that's faulty. And the ones with the white connector are not good. And yet, when I go across them, they appear to be the same. But remember, all I'm doing is checking for ground. So for example, let's say if we were to take the main chip here, if I was to get my ground here and go down this side, you can hear that there's no short. And on this side, 
there's no short. Yep, that, that hit somewhere, somewhere else on the board there. Now, if we were to go across the top one, we've got one up here. And if I was to go across this one, we've got one up here and nowhere else. Down here, one there, and one there. And it's the same here. And I've done that on every single uh, every single chip, every single MOSFET. I think there's uh, I think that might be a MOSFET there. To me, they look to be identical. So now, if we just go by the evidence we've got, we know that the one that was sent over by Emma has got a lot of hair around the motors and stuff. So I'm wondering whether or not now thinking about it, I'm wondering whether or not maybe because we know it works apart from the legs. And maybe when it goes to move the legs, it's trying to draw so much power that it actually cuts out the one of the main boards. It might be some sort of safety thing where if you were to if it was to get jammed, that it cuts out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roughly put it back together, but without the legs. And then when we try to do some movements, let's see if we can get further in the app than what we're doing. Because I know that as soon as I try to spin it, it cuts out. But what happens if I try to rotate him without the legs? If it doesn't cut out, that might suggest that maybe these motors here have had it. Because we definitely know that these are harder to turn than the, uh, the working ones here. I mean, look at that. And this one. It's just it just feels it just feels a lot harder to turn. So uh, I think it feels better than it did earlier though, because I suppose removing the bit of hair that I did on whichever one I did it on, this one I think, has probably uh, has probably helped free it up a little bit. So that is what I'm going to do. Let's put the boards back onto Emma's one, and uh, without the legs, and see if it's going to do anything different. Yeah, so I can see the arms are moving there. The legs, I keep calling them arms, you know what I mean. Maybe they are arms. Uh, so now, unplug USB cable. So let's see now, is it going to... No, I'm pretty sure though. Oh, hold on. It hasn't locked up. One second. Let's see if it's going to lock up now. That should go back up. If that goes back up, it hasn't locked up. Go on, go on, go on. Yes! That's the first bit of progress we've made here. That hasn't locked up. Uh... So right now it should be moving. Let's try this one here. So this is where you can draw a path, I think. Yeah, now he's going. Well, so by having the legs attached, this is great news, by having the legs attached, it's throwing a wobbly. So maybe what I could do is attach one leg and see if it's still throwing, see if that's still throwing a wobbly. So I suppose I better disconnect it. And let's just attach one leg. Right, let's see now. I can't remember if this is the one I've cleaned or not, but let's see now if it's going to do it. Unplug charging cord. Right, let's see now. It's going to do anything. Yes! There! Okay. Stops now. Let's see on this one. Now it should go again, I think. Result. And back up. Brilliant. That is brilliant. Right, let's uh, disconnect the battery again. There. Now let's plug this one in 
and see if this kicks it out. Well, let's see if it locks up now. It's not doing it. It's not doing it now. Okay. Mind you, it had the charging cable in. Go on. No. So something on here, and is this the one that I haven't cleaned? Looks a bit more, I don't know actually. Yeah, it's not doing anything. And now it's locked up. Fantastic, so it's this one here which is causing a problem. Brilliant. Right, let's get off that, let's pull the battery. And now let's take this one here apart, give it a clean and see if that fixes the problem. This is great news. Yeah, so really I didn't need to buy the, uh, at this moment in time, I might not have needed to buy that second droid. I just didn't think to change the legs. That only came to me now. But if it did just need a clean, then maybe we could get this one working by just gluing that bit up. Okay, so you can see hair again here. Not a huge amount though. All right, that's okay, so we've got one big lump here. Fair bit. Yeah, look here. I wonder, is it just that? Or maybe it could be something wrong with the motor or this uh, Hall effect sensor or something. So after I removed this matted hair, I did put it back together and it operated exactly the same. It seized up when you did something involving leg movement. So now I'm thinking it might be motor related. So I'm stripping it down again and this time we're gonna take a close look at the motor. Okay, so I'm going to try to take the cover off just to see if I can see what's happening on the inside. This green wire did just break off, but that's probably now with all the, the fiddling on it. So let's see if I can uh, take this off here. I don't really know how the Hall effect sensors work. I know it's to do with a magnet going near something, but I don't know if they have like a uh, on, on something rotary like this. I don't know whether... It has like a start position or not. Well, I'm just going to unsolder that tiny little bit there, try to lever off these bits and see if there's any problem with the motor on the inside. It might not be motor related. It might be something on the board that's causing it. There we go. Right, so that's out there. It's still got this click to it, which I can't quite work out. I'm just going to use my eye loop in here to see if the little, uh, you know, like the two, I can't remember what they're called now, but the two things that hit against the middle bit to give it power. I'm wondering if they've kind of folded and bent back or something. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's happened. So when I look in here, obviously we have this thing the uh, let's call it the spindle so pretend this is the spindle then we have one piece of metal here and then we should have another piece of metal like here but this one looks like it's folded that way let me zoom right in and see if I can show you there we go can you see the two pins on this side here on the right hand side look like they're bent over so those three let me get the light on it those three there on top just here or two three I can't see two or three there look to be good but those ones on the other side that's what's making it click. So when I turn this, it's it's those things that are clicking. So I don't really know if I'm going to be able to bend that back into place because the metal's probably uh, probably about to break. There you go. You can see one of the spindle things there. It's like three fingers sticking out.
these ones down here, those ones there. Well, I'm going to see if I can straighten them up. Okay, so I've been using the eye loop and a tiny little needle. And I think I've got it back into place, but it's hard to know. These, the problem is, with these things here, I don't know whether... What's happening is, it needs to be, if this is a spindle, the three fingers need to be kind of like this on it. And what's happened is, because it's got misshapen, a couple of fingers are like this, and then it's putting it this way here. So they can't be like this on it, because it will just go there. They need to be like on that bit there. So let me show you the good side. Right, so this is the good side here. with these three fingers here. So they're kind of sitting nicely on it and it doesn't matter which way we rotate it, they're sitting nicely on it. And this is the side that I've tried to bend into place. So now the angle goes much more down here and then kind of kicks up that way. But at this moment in time, I think it's making contact and I don't think it's gonna, uh, I don't think it's gonna foul on it. It's just that I'm not sure how much contact it's making. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly put it back together, solder that wire on, and we'll see now whether it's working or not. Okay, so it's uh, reconnected without the battery connected, without the uh, charger connected. Let's see now. Oh, here we go, here we go. They're both spinning. Okay, but that looked like it was spinning more than that one. So let's do that one again. It's not cutting out now either. Right, they're both spinning. That one stops, this one keeps going. Hmm, see maybe this encoder thing has kind of got a bit bent out of shape. Well, I think it's worth putting it back together to see what it does. Right, he's certainly moving now. He might be going backwards. Right, let me just get him out onto uh, an open space and then I'll see whether or, whether or not he's actually doing what he needs to do. Maybe I've got the legs on the wrong way around. No, look, this one's not working again. So uh, when I do it here, you can see it's stopped. So it worked a little bit and then it's given, it's given up again now. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix that motor. So what I'm gonna do is swap the motor over from the one over here and then this one here should be working fine. Could I buy one of those motors? Possibly. Uh, I mean, I could always maybe look at trying to fix up this droid in another video, you know, this one over here. It's just, from my point of view, it was nice knowing that I've now fault-finded to find out what the fault is. We've pinned it down to that motor. There's no doubt in my mind it was the fingers off the motor, which is, uh, which is good enough for me. So I think even if I take it apart again and try to mess with those fingers, I think it's going to be an unreliable fix. So let's just swap, let's swap the arms over. Obviously, I've got to change over the cables and stuff because the connectors are different. But uh, hopefully then it will be a fully working droid. So as you can all imagine, changing over the motor is easier said than done purely because of the amount of routing off the wires that you have to do and putting it all back together again because those wires keep getting in the way and then you have to keep moving them to allow the plastic to fit in without snagging the wires. But eventually I do unsolder the six wires off the faulty motor and then move the wire on the wires, the six wires onto the good motor. If the connector was the same, this would be 
a two minute job because you could just change over the leg in its entirety but you can't because of those connectors yes you could cut all six wires and just solder them onto the six wires from the connector but it's not really going to be a very good job is it it's a better job to leave the wires intact and re-solder them onto the motor and then you know it is the same as it was from the factory so now all that fast forwarded bit has gone through which in reality was probably about 45 minutes work but through the beauty of editing we've got it down to about 30 seconds so now you're going to see this when it's back together so at long last we are finished and here it is now so if you look at it if i press that it can do all the different movements that it can do on here no longer does it seize up uh, let's try that one there and now if i go to this one you can rotate it round. you see the leg comes out goes both ways Oh, also the head moves as well, watch this. If I do this one down here, can you see the head rotates? So it's pretty clever and now it works. Now how long the repair is going to last? I'm hoping it's going to last a long time because all I did was change over the, uh, the motor. But isn't that amazing? So it was the motor that was basically, uh, it must have been shorting i don't know maybe using too much power or shorting something out or something like that and uh, it was knocking it out completely so that appears to be working fine and i've got further good news although in the video it's only been about a minute later it has actually probably been about five hours later and i have got this one working but i don't think this is going to last very long at all so this is emma's one i'm convinced that that will last hopefully a long time this one here all i did was to fix it up i took the motor apart again wiggled around with it tried to get the fingers lined up perfectly and now it's working and also i uh that bit that was snapped i glued it well not glued it i basically melted it all together with a soldering iron now check this out let me just connect it up to this it can be a bit of a, a pain sometimes to connect these up let's see if i can get this one connected Actually, I sent it to sleep, so maybe I need to, maybe I need to plug it in here. And if you leave them, they start communicating with each other, like that one there and this one will start making noises. So I've got the BB-8 here. There you go, let's pick them all up now. Sorry, you can't see. See, the legs come out. Confirm, and now if I unplug this one, but I've got a feeling this could break at any second now. So, watch this. If I do that, you can see that it's working there now. And if I press this button here, leg comes down, rotate, and now go to here, and you can see it is actually working. Both motors, you can see it's going both ways. Now, I might be lucky and that might last a while, but I don't think it would because that motor, I can't see that lasting very long. And also where I melted the things together, I don't think that will last very long. But I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm going to leave it working in case my son ever wants to play with it. It's quite clever though, isn't it? And just in case you're interested, I'll quickly show you what BB-8 looks like. See, he's, light, he's uh, lit up now. Now, watch this. This is quite clever, but it's definitely not as good as the others. But look at the way the head normally... St oh, he's got a low battery. Look at the way the head stays kind of on top. But then when it comes to doing the different movements here, it doesn't really do much. It just makes different noises and starts nodding and stuff. Yeah, he's coming back now. But he does light up different colours. There we go. So what a result. I'm really happy with that. And I'm really impressed with, not the BBA, but these R2-D2s, I'm really impressed with them. Would I like to do them again? Maybe not. They were unbelievably fiddly and that has honestly taken me about five hours. That gearbox to get the leg down was just a complete and utter nightmare. It's the sort of thing that I wouldn't even be able to film because the videos, the video would have just gone on for hours upon hours, even with heavy editing. It was just a complete and utter 
nightmare. But once you've done it once, then it would definitely be easy. If somebody gave me another one of these right now, well, I wouldn't do it because I've already done the video on it, but if I was to buy another now, then I think I could probably fix it in, or definitely fault find it in a, a third of the time, because a lot of it is just when you don't understand it. But now that I've taken both of them apart, I feel like I know them a lot more. And yeah, I think they're pretty impressive. If you're a Star Wars fan, then I can't see how you wouldn't like R2-D2. The stuff he does is, is, really, uh, is really good, just the sound he makes and the way he moves and stuff. I think an awful lot of thought's gone into these and I think they're really good. So massive thumbs up to Emma for sending them out to me. I will now get this uh, posted back to you. Hopefully, I'm hoping, fingers crossed, it will last. I did my best on it. It was interesting to find out that the fault was with the motor. I enjoyed that little bit of fault finding. And uh, yeah, hopefully the one that I have might last a little while, which will be nice. If not, it will make quite a nice ornament in my son's room. So uh, yeah, that is it for this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. Take care. Bye now.